Hey everyone, so in today's video I am drawing myself as a magical girl. The line art from this video is available as a free coloring page for you guys to download and color in. It's over on my website, I'll have a link down below. Now for an awkward transition, cause this was supposed to be a sponsored video, but they did not approve my video in time, so I cut them out of it. Now let's get into the art portion of this video, which is me creating myself as a magical girl. The first thing I had to figure out is, what is my magical ability? What would I do? As much as I love the idea of being a villain, I'm not truly evil at heart. <laughs> and so I figured my magical girl would be nice and she would fight crime. But what kind of crime do I fight? Well, let me think of my interests. I like art, I like games, I like animals, Disney, Pokemon, I like the colors pink and turquoise. So I thought maybe I rescue animals somehow by drawing. So the first thing I thought I would figure out is my weapon because I draw and so I need some kind of drawing utensil to draw stuff. <laughs> and so I thought I would have some kind of staff that looks a little bit like a trident because it has three points coming off the top and those would be Copic markers or whatever kind of material I want. For this I assumed they're Copic markers and I love the idea of incorporating a lot of stars and bows into this because that's something that's always appealed to me and the stars I've especially loved ever since my mermaid melody days. <laughs> that's a magical girl anime about mermaids and I just thought it was adorable and I've loved star hair pieces and just incorporating stars in general ever since then. Initially I thought it'd be cool if she could draw, I don't know why I keep saying she, it's me, but whatever. <laughs> Initially I thought she could draw on air, just in thin air draw something and it comes to life, but then I thought well it needs some kind of restriction so how about she has to draw on a physical surface like a wall or the ground. And then it's kind of like Doodle Bob in SpongeBob where it peels off and comes to life. So it starts off as a 2D shape and then becomes 3D. But because it was drawn in 2D, there's some interpretation as to how it actually looks in 3D space. So I thought it'd be funny if a lot of the time the art doesn't turn out as expected once it becomes 3D and that creates additional problems or additional hurdles that she has to overcome. Think of it like That's So Raven, where Raven has a premonition, she tries to avoid it, but she just makes things worse and the premonition ends up happening anyway. It's kind of like that, where something always goes awry, but she ends up solving it in the end. I don't know why I'm planning this like it's a TV series, but whatever. So the idea is she would draw something that would somehow save the animal. So if it's a human abusing the animal, she could create some kind of monster or distraction to go after the human while the pet escapes. Or if there was not human interference, but the pet was in distress somehow, she could create an object to help the situation. Like she could draw a ladder to get into a tree to save a cat that's stuck in a tree. Things like that. But mostly she goes after bad people who are doing mean things to animals. It was really painful just drawing that guy holding the cat by the tail. I was like, no, it's too sad. My own art is too sad. <laughs> so once I had her purpose and abilities figured out, I had to start designing the actual character. Now I took some creative liberties with this because it's not exactly like me. In this initial sketch, she had some pretty thin lips, which was more accurate, but then in the final one, they're <laughs> big and plump, which <laughs> I do not have. There's a bit of wishful thinking on my part here. <laughs> Maybe when I transform, things get better. <laughs> lips get bigger, waist gets smaller. <laughs> that was not part of the plan, I just thought of that right now. <laughs> I did try to make her short though, and give her thick thighs although she looks a bit less short in the final art. Now, I'm not good at designing interesting clothing, so this outfit is a little crazy and odd. <laughs> I'm just not good at coming up with cute outfits. One thing I did think of later on was instead of doing sort of a waist cape or whatever you wanna call that, it's kinda like an open skirt that she's wearing. Instead of that, I should've given her a short cape off of her shoulders. I think that would've been really cool. But I didn't think of that until I was done the art. 
I made her shirt a bit of a scoop neck because I like scoop necks. I don't like having exposed armpits most of the time, so I made her sleeves come down to about the elbow. But I also love off the shoulder looks like Belle, and so I gave her the off the shoulder sleeve on top of those sleeves. She has that open front skirt like I mentioned, but also little shorts underneath, and she's wearing tights and boots. She has three little balls on her head, kind of like how Sailor Moon has her two meatballs. I wasn't purposely trying to make it like Sailor Moon, but for some reason this was just the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> I also love all things princess, so I wanted something that somewhat resembled a crown on the head as well. Maybe that's why I thought of the three balls, because it's kind of crown-like. I don't know. <laughs> but I put these yellow spikes on the head, which are supposed to, one, be like a crown, but two, look a little bit like her staff trident thing and also look like a star roughly like a star really i'm just trying to repeat some shapes throughout by having pointy things that's why the top of her boots also has a half star shape then for her necklace it's not really a necklace because there's no string the stars are kind of just stuck there on her skin kind of like those little piercings some people have but it's not really a piercing it's more like it's just stuck on it's kind of like a body sticker and it's not like she's sitting there sticking the stickers on before she goes to fight the baddies it just appears there when she transforms because all magical girls have to have a magical girl transformation before tracing it I actually scanned it brought it into Photoshop and scaled it down because it didn't quite fit on the paper properly and I also reduced the saturation to nothing so it's just pure gray the first time I printed it out though I printed her too high and I decided to use that page as my color planning page I just very roughly colored it in to plan out what colors would go where I knew I wanted the pink the turquoise and navy blue but I just had to figure out what parts are gonna be what color also random tidbit here I don't know if it's apparent but she has a big bow on her back and her waist belt is actually the ribbon that's in front of her and then it wraps around back and is a big fluffy bow from this pose though you don't really see the bow for her hair I wanted to leave it as one solid chunk I didn't want to draw different locks of hair it's just one big shape really for coloring in her hair, I wanted to play around with a new highlight technique. I don't often leave pure white highlights, but I wanted to try it out for this one because it makes me think of Magical Girl animes, I guess, and I just wanted everything to look a little extra sparkly. It's definitely different than what I normally do, but I actually like it, especially with the final art and how it all looks in the end. I think it looks nice. I tried to add highlights everywhere else too. I normally don't go too bright with highlights but I purposely made an effort to include more because like I said I want it to be shiny and bright. If you look at her ear piercings she has her lobes pierced twice because I have my lobes pierced twice and then she has a cartilage piercing. I have one as well. Woohoo! But only on the one ear. I want to get my second ear cartilage pierced so in the drawing I gave her both because that's what I want. Even though her waist is skinnier than mine I tried to give her just a little bit of pudge like a little bit of fat sticking out. It's not much, but like I said, there's some wishful thinking going on here. <laughs> One thing I probably could have done differently with this is make some areas white. I kind of have white areas in terms of little white highlights, but I mean, for example, her shirt's turquoise and the bow is pink and then her tights and her main part of her shirt are a dark blue some stuff could have been left white. I almost made her gloves white because her one glove is against her hair and it's a very similar shade of pink and blends in. But then the other one, if it was white, would blend in with the background. So I felt like either way it was gonna blend in somehow. And I didn't really want anything else to be white, so ugh, I left it at that. But it's definitely something I could have incorporated because like I've said in past videos, sometimes you forget that things can just be white. You feel like everything has to be colored in as a color, but sometimes it's good to just leave things white and then use a bit of gray or like a light blue, a light whatever to add a bit of shading. I just feel like I always forget about black and white and gray really. One thing I'm surprised I did not do in this is add some super frilly ruffles. 
She has just tiny little lacy edges, but none of those big rippling folds of fabric. That's something I always associate with Magical Girls, and I almost did that around her hips where she has that little translucent piece of fabric at the top of her skirt thingy. I almost made that big and billowing, but it just looked too dumb. I had to erase it and just make it a little more subdued. But man, big frilly ruffles are really fun to draw. The markers on the end of her staff are meant to be partially retractable. It was included in the sketch at the beginning, and that way they're not constantly sticking out. Plus, if she just wants one color out at a time, she can do that so she doesn't accidentally use a second color. Although my thought is, even when all three are sticking out, they're sticking out at different angles, so she could just angle the staff a certain way so that she's always using just one marker. And if she wants to use more than one at once, then she can. As much as I love pink and turquoise, I think what really makes this drawing pull together is the navy blue. At first, it doesn't look like a whole lot, but once I add the star pattern, it's just so cute. The darkness of the blue adds more value contrast because the turquoise and pink aren't very dark, so it adds the darkness that the picture needs, but it also adds something more detailed because the star pattern is just adorable. Looking at it before the stars, it's like, yeah, okay, that's okay. And then after I added it, I was like, this is amazing! Ah! <laughs> and what it reminds me of is in Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, you can currently get these fortune cookies. They're the Julian cookies and everything is space themed, like stars and constellations and things. And it totally makes me think of that, which is funny because I drew this before that event started. So it was just a happy coincidence. It's just meant to be. You could say the stars are aligned. <laughs> Here I'm going in with my navy blue pencil to darken some areas. I use it pretty much wherever I think a shadow would be or if there's just a really long pink sec section and I'm like, hey, this could use some blue. I wanted some big stars in the background and they were there in the sketch, but I didn't trace them over because I didn't want them to have any outlines. So I waited till the end and then used my light box over the sketch to see where the star placement was and trace them in marker. I just used very pale colors so that they wouldn't be too distracting. Well, there, oh God, my throat. Don't wreck the lipstick. Well, there you have it. There is me as a magical girl, off to save animals in need. I wanted her to have a very stereotypical magical girl look, and I think I've succeeded in that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to check out the link in the video description. I'll see you guys in my next video.